Are you looking to act like a fool this April Fool's Day? Well, turns out you'll have some company. We're checking out a parade that's taking over the city streets. Telling a joke, pulling a prank, causing a ruckus. There's one day of the year that these acts are encouraged and celebrated, April Fool's Day. <laughs> Today, I'm meeting with New York City's annual April Fool's Day Parade founder, Joey Skaggs, and the planning committee to learn more about the upcoming festivities. So Joey, tell me about this year's parade. What are you expecting? Well, we never know what to expect, and that's the beauty of the parade. It's a fun, silly day, traditionally, uh, but we take it further than that. We go for the biting satire. While it's not a national holiday, people around the world have been taking part in April Fool's festivities since the 19th century. In 1986, Joey held the first annual April Fool's Day parade to poke fun at the past year's public displays of foolishness. 30 years later, people from around the city are still making the trek from 59th and 5th to Washington Square Park to honor the year's buffoons. But what makes a fool a fool? We are riffing off the news, we're riffing off celebrities, politicians, people who uh, invade our uh, daytime and nighttime with their stories, and this is our chance to get back at them. We all contribute ideas, and we read the paper, watch the news, and they all the team makes selections, and we compile the selections during the course of the year. The theme for this year's parade is Hands Up, Don't Shoot. Politicians, celebrities, current events, and even children's TV show characters can be fools, and the public is encouraged to dress up and join the fun. Every year, a king of fools is crowned and is chosen based on the loudest cheers at Washington Square Park. While it's a funny holiday, the committee is attracting people year after year that are no joke to society. I am a lawyer. I'm an intellectual property lawyer, and um, I know about uh, the First Amendment, I know about satire, and I support it. I'm the reigning uh, parade king, and I'll be uh, crowning the next one. I've been involved for a couple of years, started off as just a big fan of the parade. Part of what draws me back to this is not just that it's fun in the present, but there's a historical context for the King of Fools, for the Fools Festival. I'm sure you have unique stories that have been made throughout the years. You want to share any with me? Uh, Exxon Valdez, uh, we had uh, the wreck of the Exxon Valdez and we had black plastic going out of the ship, polluting the streets, all going down. And it was a really, it was a powerful parade float. And I, I particularly like that because it had to do with pollution. While the city streets are filled with fools, more fools than usual on April 1st, the parade is a true representation of New York City's diversity. What makes the parade fantastic is what people do, people who are not part of this group, part of the structure, because they will they are more creative than we are. And they come up with the greatest, weirdest costumes. But don't be deceived, the parade is more than something to laugh at. It's a way to get people thinking about current times through free speech. The things that that really take our breath away, that make us laugh laugh the most, um, have something much deeper, much more important underneath. And and I think the beautiful message that I would give is to, to dig a little bit deeper. So we can take floats, creative ideas done by artists and have, that have a bigger message to them that reach people. So we're reaching people with satire, with art, with the floats, with the lookalikes, with the comments that they make. I want them to feel happy and celebratory, but at the same time, you know, appreciate the deeper meaning of it too. seen here today, the April Fool's Day Parade can only happen in New York City because of the unique people that live here. And who knows, I might be there too. Reporting from New York, I'm Christy Clemens.